Hi, my name is Ted Ellis. I am the acting chair of the Federal 400 Commission of African American History. Under public law, Federal Public Law 115-102, we are responsible for celebrating and commemorating the stories of African Americans for over the past 400 years in the 50 contiguous states. I'm also the director of the Civil Rights Institute at Florida State University. And you guys all know me as the artist who have been pictorially documenting African-American history and culture for the past 35 years. Well, you know, my experiential experiences going to the French quarters in New Orleans and Jackson Square when I was old enough and responsible enough to catch public transit and see all of the artists engage the public in Jackson Square painting and telling their stories and narratives. Well, Carter G. Woodson, the founder of Black History Month, knew it was extremely important that we have a positive, constructive image of African Americans and who we were, that we were a, a community of value and worth, a community of resiliency, a community of strength and purpose, um, one that is triumphant at the very end of it. And so in all of my art, I've taken the lead with Carter G. Woodson, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, to paint that story in a narrative, to show our resiliency, our perseverance, our strength and struggle I will try it. You know, I get, it's a toss up. Uh, you know, if I look at Margaret Burroughs from St. Rose, Louisiana, the founder of the Sabo Museum, um, the founder of Southside Cultural Art Center, Lois Willou Jones, um, if I think uh, a male, that's, that's Jacob Lawrence, that's um, Romare Beard, and um, tremendous amount of artists who were actively engaged in social advocacy and social justice. And um, I've modeled that my, my, my paint, my purpose in that, in that manner. Well, you know, I have always argued um, as much as I could persuasively that we need to always see constructive images. Yeah, I took a front with Hollywood with the stereotypical images of African-Americans and my wife would always say, you know, it's just entertainment. But I said, no, it's a little bit more than entertainment. It's projecting images of how people will perceive who you are and how you live. And so um, I've been steadfast um, in that space of painting important works of art that speaks to our strength, our struggle, as I said before, our triumph through all the um, the challenges of, of being oppressed people of color here in the United States of America. Well, I think as an artist, you gotta be honest about yourself. Each artist has their own artistic DNA. You gotta paint what you feel. You gotta paint who you are, what you're about. Um, I've been very consistent in that space in my engagement in community, in my engagement in corporate opportunities and my engagements in the museum setting. You know, after 20 something years, I went back to school and got my master's in museum studies so that I could programmatically um, be very purpose in, in telling our story and giving other young artists that opportunity. Well, you know, that's definitely when you talk about social justice and advocacy. So if you think about the challenges of African-Americans through slavery, the redemptive period, Jim Crow, civil rights, um, age of Obama, to our present unrest, you know, I am telling that story through my art. My master thesis project was on 400 years of African-American history that landed me an opportunity as scholar in residence at Old Dominion University. So uh, that spoke to the power of the art, the, the narrative of the art, um, why it's critically important that we use every asset in our community to fight for justice and fight against inequality. You know, uh, our strength, our strength through it all, uh, through adversity, uh, you know, finding and understanding, you know, faith with hope and work that we can, we can find that answer and that solution no matter what the challenges, what the obstacles are. And, and so that's what I love about my pastor. You know, he speaks of that every Sunday, Wednesday, whenever you engage him, uh, it's a level of optimism. I mean, you see it, it emanates. And um, the same with, with me, I try to work at it very hard with my art. I mean, imagine that, you know, this little old artist from the lower ninth ward of New Orleans, um, um, the acting chair of a federal commission um, responsible for programming for 50 plus million African-Americans in the United States. Um, the inaugural director of the Civil Rights Institute at Florida State um, University and being programmatic in that space and fighting against injustice and equality and using the arts to a high capacity to make that happen. We know Asala recognizes art, African-Americans in art right now realizing the importance of, of, of advocacy and activism through the arts. That's gospel, that's that, that wonderful world, word that heals us when we're in church and, we, and when we're up against challenges that we, we go to. We hear it in, in poetic prose and we see it with our visual arts and narrative through the Harlem Renaissance and, and thereafter. You know, um, 
this this artist who was very passionate about his community, um, wanted to um, exact constructive change, wanted others to realize our importance and relevancy. You know, art says nothing, but it says everything. It speaks multiple languages. And so I know I have the capacity to reach the whole world through my art. 